Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to cover the top 10 things I've learned after two years of game development. So without further ado, let's jump in. Make a demo. A game demo is a useful way to act as a proof of concept for your game. It's a way to showcase some of your game's unique features while giving the users a taste of what it's like to play your game. Demos can be used for a variety of purposes like having your game participate in a conference, getting your game reviewed by gaming websites, or sending a prototype to publishers. Depending on where you're at in your level of production, you may think that your game isn't complete enough for a demo, but think again. For my second game, Henry's Day, I wasn't even close to finishing the game when I heard about Steam Next Fest. In one week, I was able to put together a demo for the festival by making a much smaller version of my game with only a couple of quests. Making this demo allowed me to participate in the festival and it allowed others to start playing my game. I was able to monetize this opportunity further by providing any player who completed the demo with the ability to put their own character in the final version of the game. I learned a lot through the entire process of putting together the demo and having others play it, and the feedback I received was really valuable. Participate in festivals and conferences. There are many events centered around indie games that it's easy to find one that your game can participate in. For Henry's Day, I was involved in three different events, two online and one in person. The amount of wishlists my game received skyrocketed as a result of being in these events. Any type of marketing or promo that I had done in the past didn't yield me nearly as many wishlists as these festivals did. So start searching and get involved. Scale down your ideas. A common mistake for game studios of all sizes is over-promising and under-delivering. It's a good idea to start small, so don't go trying to make the next Skyrim. You should ask yourself, what makes my game unique? Try to find one gameplay concept that is unique about your game and perfect it, test it, and build upon it. In my game, Henry's Day, you have to talk to people and gather items before time runs out. Once the timer reaches zero, the day resets and no one remembers you. I kept that concept consistent throughout my game development process and was able to utilize it in my demo as well. Don't overdo it on social media. Just like scaling down your game idea, you'll want to scale down your approach to social media as well. Don't try posting on every social media platform possible. It's too much to manage, especially for a solo dev, and you'll find yourself using all of your time trying to go viral instead of making a great game. Pick one to two social media platforms and post regularly on them. Doing this will allow you to better understand your audience on that specific platform. It will result in you creating better content and gaining more of an organic following. Make content other than your game. Staying on topic of social media, try to avoid making content that is solely focused on your game alone. If you're a brand new dev with little to no followers, understand that people don't care about your game, and for good reason. They have no idea who you are or have any attachment to the characters, story, or concept in your game. A good idea is to include helpful tips in your devlogs that other devs can use. I try to do this in each one of my devlog videos and the feedback I have received has been positive. You can also branch out into other types of content like tutorials, reviews, redesigns of old game, or helpful tip videos like this one. Fiverr can be your friend. I talked about the pros and cons of using Fiverr in my last devlog. If you haven't seen it and are considering using Fiverr for the development side of your game, go check out that video. I go into detail about what led up to me using Fiverr and what my experience was like. I've used Fiverr for cover art, game development, and model rigging. As long as you take your time to find the right person and you're clear in your communication, Fiverr can be extremely helpful. Another tip is to consider using Fiverr's pro service. This is where you pay more money but are guaranteed to have someone who knows what they're doing work on your project. Test your game often. Making video games is hard and oftentimes things break. The sooner and more often you break your game, the better equipped you'll be at debugging it. It's a good idea to have multiple people test your game on different devices, screen sizes, and settings. If you're making a PC game, test it on a laptop and see how it runs. If you're making a game on a 16x10 monitor, test it on a 16x9 monitor and make sure the UI is still within view. Have people you trust to give you honest feedback test your game. Don't freely give out Steam keys. I've seen videos from other indie devs who suggest blindly mailing Steam keys to publishers, bloggers, curators, basically anyone who wants a key to your game in exchange for a promo. But don't do this. When you launch your game, you'll be bombarded with multiple emails requesting keys for your game. 
More often than not, these emails are scams, even if they link to an actual Steam curator page. Steam actually has a process in place for delivering keys to curators on their platform. If you're wanting curators to review your game, then I would stick to Steam's process. But this advice isn't just limited to curators. Think about it for a second. You're giving away a digital copy of your game to someone you don't know for free. What this can result in is your game being pirated and sold on other websites for cheaper than you're selling it on Steam. And obviously, you don't make any profit from those sales. This happened shortly after I launched Henry's Day. While I did take it as a bit of a compliment that my game was pirated, it ultimately undermined the amount of work that I put into the game up to that point. It's frustrating to think that someone else is profiting from a product I worked so hard to put together. If you must give out a key, make sure you know who you're giving it to or for what purpose. For example, you may need to provide a key to participate in a festival, but use your discretion when providing keys. Find other ways to use game dev to make money. Game engines are powerful pieces of software that can be used for more than just games. You can make music videos, movies, 3D designs, the possibilities are endless. One way I've made money on the side is by putting together 3D floor plans for other companies. This has been a great way for me to make some extra cash while learning more about Unreal Engine. I also try to bring up game development every time I network. This has resulted in me working on smaller game projects for industries that don't typically utilize gaming. So think outside the box. Lastly, don't give up. You've probably seen other successful indie devs and may be feeling discouraged, but don't be. For my first game, The Virus, I spent tons of time posting on Twitter, perfecting my Steam page, making my trailer, the list goes on. When that day finally came to launch my game, it was very underwhelming to say the least. The wish list didn't convert at nearly the rate I thought they would have, and it left me feeling like my game was a dud. For my second game, the hype was much larger. I had learned so much more and had a hundred times more wish lists for Henry's Day than I had for the virus. But again, on release day, the wish list didn't convert like I thought they would have. Through these two experiences, I have learned to taper my expectations. I've also learned that I won't be retiring off of game development anytime soon. But despite all of this, I still love game dev. I love the process of creating a game. I love writing the stories. I love designing the levels. When I'm working on a game, I feel like I'm doing what I was meant to do. Especially when it comes to the game I'm building now, Spire. Spire is my love letter to the JRPG genre. When I was a child, my favorite games were Final Fantasy X, Chrono Trigger, Kingdom Hearts, basically any JRPG I could get my hands on. Playing these games allowed me to escape from the difficult life I had at home into a new world. And because of this, I want to recreate that same feeling for someone else who needs it. So I continue to work on, I continue to press on, and I'm not gonna give up, and neither should you. Thanks for watching this video. If you found any of these tips helpful at all, please drop a like or subscribe to my channel for more indie dev and Unreal Engine content. Thanks again, everybody, for watching my video, and I'll catch you later.